Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Kami ang Group 1 at kami ngayon ay magre-report ukol sa domain archaea at domain bacteria. Pero bago yun, syempre dapat kilalanin muna natin ang ating mga presenters. Nandito si Ray, ang Voice of Thousand Cartoons. You wanna see what's on the other side? Me? What are you doing? No, presenter 24601. The time is up and your parole's begun. Si Sean, na maraming tanong sa buhay. Si Marvins, na maraming ideas. Si Lance, na computer whiz. At si Ridem, na master ng arnis. So sit back, relax, at pag-aralan natin ang mga prokaryotes. Originally, it was believed that the only living creatures were plants and animals. However, after a couple of centuries, five kingdoms were established that included plants, animals, protists, fungi, and bacteria. This was divided into two domains, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes were identified since they have a nucleus while prokaryotes have DNA as part of their nucleus. However, after extensive genetic research by Carl Wuss of the University of Illinois, he concluded that life on Earth is categorized into three different domains, namely Eukarya, Archaea, and Eubacteria. Archaea were thought to be like bacteria, which they are, since they looked and functioned similarly to them. However, they also share genes with eukaryotes. Archaea means ancient, like the word archaic, since it was believed that they were the oldest and least evolved species. During prehistoric times, it was believed that the earth used to be harsh, and they were the first to adapt in these conditions. Now, for more information regarding domain archaea, let's give it up for Marvin Senri. In the given phylogenetic tree of domain archaea, pairs of sister taxons are evident given that they have similar immediate ancestors. One pair is between chorarchaeotes and nanoarchaeotes, and another is between uriarchaeotes and cranarchaeotes. However, based on a study conducted by Gribaldo and Brochier 2006, using small subunit rRNA, a different relationship was found. Nanoarchaeota was found to share a more immediate ancestor with Uriarchaeota, while Curarchaeota and Crinarchaeota share a different immediate ancestor. Additionally, a new domain was established, which is Tomarchaeota. The first taxon which we will investigate in domain Archaea are the Curarchaeotes. These organisms have varying lengths ranging from approximately 0.16 and 0.18 micrometers. Some of its characteristics like recombination, replication, cell division, and repair which are evident in species like Corarchaeum cryptophyllum are similar to other species like Canarchaeota and Eurycaryota. On the other hand, Nanoarchaeota is another interesting taxa as they are a group of symbiotic archaea that engage in close interspecies associations with diverse archaeal hosts. Nanoarchaeote sequences have been recovered from high temperature geothermal springs and marine hydrothermal vents around the world. Shown on the screen is an example of symbiotic relationship between a host and a nanoarchaeote taken by Wirch and his team at 2016. Species in the classes of Methanobacteria, Methanococci, and Methanomicrobia represent archaea that can be generally described as methanogens. Methanogens are unique in that they can reduce carbon dioxide in the presence of hydrogen producing methane. They are commonly shaped as spherical or rod shaped and usually exist in clusters as seen in the image in the right. And like with other phyla, the classification was based to their genomic difference concerning the SSU rRNA. Most but not all Cranarchaeota are hyperthermophiles. Some of them, notably the genus Spirolobus, are able to grow at temperatures up to 113 degrees Celsius. Archaea of the genus Sulfolobus are thermophiles that prefer temperature around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, and acidophiles that prefer a pH of 2 to 3. Sulfolobus can live in aerobic or anaerobic environments. In the presence of oxygen, sulfolobus use metabolic processes similar to those of heterotrophs. In anaerobic environments, they oxidize sulfur to produce sulfuric acid, which is stored in granules. Unlike Eurycaeota, they are shaped like, uh, like rods or irregular cocci, despite being sister taxons. 
So where do we commonly find archaeans? Since they are extremophiles, then they're originally discovered in extreme environments such as hydrothermal vents and terrestrial hot springs. So they're found in diverse range of highly saline, acidic, and anaerobic environments. Thank you, Ray and Marvins, for discussing what the domain Archaea is all about. An interesting fact that you could also think about is that thermophiles are believed to be the first common ancestor since they are among the oldest and simplest species. However, other scientists argued that it is more likely that they are the sole survivors of cataclysmic events such as an asteroid. Not long after this domain appeared, it was believed that a group of single cellular organism appeared from the common ancestor that now makes up domain bacteria. Let's give it up for Lance and Shan for more information regarding this domain. Based on the given phylogenetic tree of the domain bacteria, we see the distinct taxons under the domain, namely proteobacteria, chlamydiae, spirochetes, cyanobacteria, and gram-positive bacteria. This tree separates each taxon based on their distinct individual characteristics. This classification, however, is still being updated. For example, presented here is a proposed alternative classification for deeper branching bacteria with the aim of transferring some species of Coprothermobacter to Coprothermobacter CA based on recent updates on the characteristics of the involved bacteria. Now, we will be discussing the specified taxons under the domain based on the initial tree presented. Proteobacteria they are typically characterized as a gram-negative bacteria with an outer membrane mainly composed of lipopolysaccharides. They usually operate under anaerobic conditions and most of them have a flagella, which is utilized for their mobility. Their movement, however, is not limited to this, as several species use bacterial gliding and some of them are actually non-motile. Examples of species under this taxon include E. coli and Pseudomonas aeruginosa as shown here in the pictures. Next is Chlamydia. They are mainly categorized as obligate intracellular bacteria. This is due to the lack of several metabolic and biosynthetic pathways for it to function properly, and its reliance on the host cell for intermediates like ATP. They are also known to have a biphasic cycle with two developmental forms called elementary body or EB and reticulate body or RB. These phases differ under metabolic activity with EB being inactive while RB is active. EB is the phase during the infection stage and afterwards, they differentiate into the RB phase which is active metabolically but is now non-infectious. It is responsible for majority of sexually transmitted infections or STIs. Examples include Chlamydia pneumoniae and Chlamydia trachomatis which are shown in this slide. Spirochetes are gram-negative bacteria with lens ranging from 3 to 500 micrometers long. Their most notable feature is their spiral or helical shape. They are oftentimes found in a liquid environment, such as mud or water or blood, and they are considered as motile bacteria due to their endoflagellum. Some spirochetes are very dangerous pathogens, examples of which are Trepanoma pallidum, which causes syphilis, and Leptospira, which causes leptospirosis. Cyanobacteria are gram-negative bacteria capable of photosynthesis, and they are notable for their bluish-green color. They vary morphologically, with some cyanobacteria adapting spherical, rod, or spiral shapes. They are capable of photosynthesis due to thylakoids, which are thought to be evolutionary predecessors to plastids found in green plants today. They are also known as the first organisms to produce oxygen. An example of a cyanobacteria is, to the right of the slide, Prochlorococcus, which is one of the most abundant photosynthetic organisms on Earth. Gram-positive bacteria are bacteria containing thick peptidoglycan cell walls and no outer lipid membrane. This is contrary to gram-negative bacteria, which contain thin peptidoglycan cell walls but have an outer lipid membrane. The morphology of gram-positive bacteria varies with some having a round or cocci shape and some adopting a rod or bacillus shape. An example of a gram-positive bacteria is Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is very well known for causing pneumonia. Thanks again, Lance and Sean. What makes the search for the universal ancestor very difficult is the occurrence of lateral genes transfer. This means that other genetic materials could be passed on to different organisms. 
it was believed that the transfer of bacterial genes to an archaean cell is what allowed oxygen metabolism that led to the rise of eukaryotic cells. This engulfed bacteria became part of the cell known as the mitochondria. After millions of years after the development of archaean bacteria, a group from archaeans diverged. From these ancestors, the eukaryotes rose. These will be discussed further by the succeeding groups, and group 1 wishes them all the best. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We are now ready for your questions.